Sure. I mean, I think that, you know, the important thing is that for patients who've had a history of cervical dysplasia, these screening, the changes, there aren't changes in their recommendations for them. But for patients who've had a history of a lot of normal pap smears, we are changing the recommendations. The current recommendations, one of the biggest changes was that the age of initiation of screening will be age 21. Previously, it was age 21 or three years from what, the time that they started sexu having sexual intercourse, and I think that's a big change that we have instituted to recommend that we don't screen anyone under the age of 21. Um, the other changes are that if patients over the age of 21 and over the age of between 21 and 29, we can now screen them every two years instead of every one year if they have had three consecutive normal annual pap smears. And then finally, for patients who are over the age of 30, if they've had three consecutive normal pap smears, we can also increase those intervals to approximately three years. Again, really reinforcing that if patients have had a history of having um, abnormal pap smears, then that, that changes that and they don't fall into this screening algorithm. For a patient that hasn't had an abnormal smear, mm -hmm. what is the logic behind scaling it back to every other year? I think the logic behind it is that we have definitely have a lot of studies both in terms of the risk of developing cancer when we know we've had normal cytologies and the risk of developing either high grade dysplasia or abnormal cells or cervical cancer is exceedingly low in those patient categories. But again, we choose those patients very carefully. And would there be any negatives to being screened too often? I think there are negatives that are a little underestimated. I think, you know, obviously the biggest problem with screening in a any type of screening test is the risk of having false positive tests, meaning where you're being screened when you don't need to, and that screening needs to leads to subsequent tests, so that there is a lot of anxiety around the idea of having an abnormal pap smear, um, especially for younger patients. Um, there's also the risk of over-treatment, so that some practitioners may may decide to over-treat an abnormal pap smear, and those can actually have ramifications for patients' future fertility, um, for, um, you know, their, you know, having unnecessary surgical procedures done. So I do think it's important to think about that.